Blessings, Belly fam. Welcome back to Afro Belly and thank you for tuning in. My name is Linnea. If you are new here, then welcome and thank you for joining me. I took the past few weeks to reorganize my life following my birthday in August. And as we go into October, you can look forward to fortnightly content on Wednesdays. I know the criminals who have been threatening my life on social media because they've been exposed on my channel have been hoping I have decided to halt creating this series and I am holding back because I'm quaking in the perfect fitting knee-high boots I keep fantasizing about finding. But this is not the case. This is the eighth episode of Life After Death and unlike my previous videos that are based solely on my own life experiences, this video will explore some of the views and experiences of a man who is of great significance to Jamaica and to my own understanding and analysis of my personal culture and heritage, as well as the various factors that contribute to life in present day Jamaica. The next documentary will be the long awaited full expose on Ramon Kalai and Mark Lynchu. If you haven't done so already, then please watch the previous seven episodes of this Life After Death series in order to prepare yourself for the documentary that is about to come. Please check out Garden Asli, inspired by the Ramon Kalai and Mark Lynchu investigation for inspiring everyday wear and statement items to add some soul remembrance to your wardrobe. It is a great way to support the channel as well as 50% of the profits will go towards counselling and support for the women who came forward to share their traumatic experiences of Mark Lynchu and Ramon Kalai. If you have anything to share, please email me at ramonkalaiabuse at gmail.com. I want to clarify how important and special Jamaica is to me. It isn't a place I go to to visit for a flight hotel package deal. It is where I was raised. It is my home. The culture is my culture. The people are my people. The problems are my problems. Many of my peers couldn't understand why after an adulthood of traveling between both countries, I decided to return to Jamaica almost five years ago. I had vowed to go back home and as trying as it has been, going home has provided many missing pieces I needed to gain in order to understand who I am and to have more insight into my immediate and extended family, my culture, the country and our destinies at large. In 2020, two years after I returned to Jamaica, I travelled to the UK and got stuck in the lockdown. While staying indoors and overdosing on yoga and YouTube, I came across a video from someone who, in my opinion, is a cultural connoisseur and expert in exploring all aspects of Jamaican culture, from the social psyche to the systematic infrastructure, debunking false theories and everything in between on an entirely unprecedented level. His content totally blew my mind. When I listen to his videos, I think of how loved and appreciated they would be by my late grandfather Wesley Saunders featured in episode one and two as he was a true patriot and wanted the best for Jamaica. This YouTuber is a keen thinker and charismatic speaker who wields his intellect and critical faculties like a sharp sword of truth and he would continue to amass a huge online following and create an undeniable impact on Jamaican society known by children and elders alike. When I returned home to Jamaica, I learned how he has become a surrogate father for many young Jamaican men. And Sir P of Politrix Watch is a pioneer, whistleblower and truth seeker who exists completely in his own lane. Disliked and even feared by Jamaica's corrupt, the upper and lower echelons alike, he has a wide range of hard-hitting content laced with a healthy dose of humour and social political satire where he provides keen analysis about Jamaican mindsets, culture, crime, society, 
history and politics in a bid to expand and positively transform the understanding and consciousness of his viewers while impacting positive changes in Jamaica for future generations and disrupting the largely unconscious self-destruct mode the island is presently in. No one in the public eye has ever seen Sir P's face, nor do his subscribers know his true identity. He's explained that when he started his channel, Politrix Watch, he had the foresight to know many secrets he planned to expose would make him a seriously wanted man. And this is exactly what has happened. His life has been privately and publicly threatened by many, including known gang members from Jamaica's top notorious gangs to dancehall artists like the infamously incarcerated Vibes Cartel and the powers that govern Jamaica have even discussed introducing new media laws to Jamaica in a bid to restrict what Jamaican YouTubers can speak about. Thankfully, his identity has never been revealed, nor has he been captured. He has explained to the PIA, the collective global movement that includes his subscribers and people who offer information to him in support of his mission, that he is 10 steps ahead of those who wish to destroy him and has knowingly set a multitude of traps to block anyone who tries to find his true identity. Due to his military background, the picture Pictures and identities of men in various defense forces have been wrongly exposed in fake campaigns. But Sir P, as well as his voice and identity have been concealed, has never been revealed. Sir P has been running Politrix Watch for four years now. Unapologetic and willing to get into the nitty gritty of things, I urge anyone who has a genuine interest in Jamaica, past, present and future, one that goes beyond package holidays and tourist experiences and consistently identifies solutions to Jamaica's many problems, to watch his vast archive of education content. He is an unnamed but highly acclaimed national hero of Jamaica in real life. FYI, Sir P of Politrix Watch is the main inspiration behind my Life After Death series and his work has not only helped me to integrate many of my personal experiences as a Jamaican, both in and outside of the island, it has provided cultural context that I lacked when it came to my own understanding of my family and our lives at large. Thank you Sir P for assisting me and providing me with the input to share my own personal stories in video form. A few years ago, Sir P introduced his followers to his own criminal classification system and the categories he created have become commonplace terms within Jamaican society, both on the streets and in the media. Such is his far-reaching influence. I am introducing his system to the Afrobelly channel to help my subscribers to understand not only these criminal categories, but the social roles that they are linked to. Serpy states that this system occurs globally, but the social factors from one country to another may differ. And in the case of Jamaica, there are some culturally unique aspects to consider. I am also sharing this system as an outro to episode 1 to 7 of Life After Death and a prelude to my upcoming expose, The Truth About Ramon Kalai and Mark Linshu, which will feature a group of criminals from my Jamaican childhood hometown of Mandeville. Before I begin, I must state that I am paraphrasing all of the information shared across Sir P's Jamaica Criminal Series and all of this information comes from Sir P. I do not take credit for this system or any of the information I will share here and I have linked his top videos below so you can watch for yourself and subscribe to his channel. Sending a big thank you again to Sir P for your work. You have made a powerful impact impact on my own understanding and growth and consequently my responsibility to speak. Much love and respect to you always.
Sir P introduces over the three videos, three types of criminal, part one and two, and the missing piece of the crime puzzle, cursing oil women, four types of criminals in Jamaica. A criminal is known in Jamaica as a bad man. Sir P bases the main three types of Jamaican criminal on fuel octane, the gas that is used to fuel cars. In Jamaica, the two most common forms of petrol are 87 octane fuel and 90 octane fuel. Introducing the 87 octane criminal, aka Badman, Jamaica's low budget criminal, one who carries out the dirty work and is akin to the cheaper, more cost effective 87 octane fuel. This criminal is usually born in poverty and suffering, has no father present in the home, and is raised in a family with many siblings who have different fathers. He roams the streets from a young age and starts getting into trouble quite young. Usually lacking completed formal education, Serpy states that there are exceptions to this rule, but the average story is this background. The criminal ghetto youth, who is usually featured in the Jamaican media, is an 87 octane bad man. They are usually emotionally volatile, have low intelligence and lack the ability to see the bigger picture which often leads to their untimely deaths. They commit low-budget crimes like petty theft, pickpockets, bag grabbers, robbing drivers and some shooting. A key aspect of this 87 octane bad man is the lack of mercy society has for them. They are despised and they are the criminal whose death is celebrated. They live from hand to mouth. Regardless of how much money they make, they will die poor and do not have the means to buy out anyone, whether police or corrupt government officials. In Jamaica, we have a term, bad man police. And in a separate video entitled, What is a bad man police? Sounds like nonsense to me. Also on Politrix Watch, Sir P speaks about the term itself being an oxymoron and contradictory in nature because as he states, you can either be a bad man or a police and it is a ridiculous term he feels Jamaicans should stop using as these bad man police are crooks not heroes. He explains that these corrupt police willingly work as paid assassins and historically every don in Jamaica has a bad man police in their pockets. Serpy mentions some of Jamaica's famous bad man police, men like Renato Adams, Trinity and Lane, police who have also been accused in and outside of court of wrongdoing. The Badman police targets the 87 octane Badman because they cannot buy anyone out and are destroyed when caught. Serpy says the life of an 87 octane Badman is an endless cycle of crime, poverty and death. Introducing the 90 Octane Badman. The 90 Octane Badman is the second classification of criminal and Sir P describes him as a premium criminal. This is a criminal who usually is born in the same impoverished environment as an 87 octane, sometimes lower or middle class, but through various means, usually illicit schemes, he obtains riches. The premium criminal uses that money to recruit 87 octane criminals to be his soldiers, and this makes him into what is known as a Jamaican don. A criminal who governs specific communities. Sir P explains how the 90 octane bad man can do the same exact crimes as the 87 octane bad man, but due to their money, the police in their back pockets, and their political affiliations, they can get away with what they do, whereas the 87 octane bad man cannot. Sir P provides a harrowingly deep example to show the contrast 
contrast in the way Jamaican society treats the 90 octane bad man in comparison to how the 87 octane bad man is treated because of the difference in their wealth and influence. He explains that in a typical low income community or even a garrison in Jamaica, there will be a Don, a 90 octane bad man who has developed wealth with which he hires several 87 octanes to do his bidding and consequently has influence on the entire area. This Don would have close relationships with some of the police in the area and historically also has relationships with politicians from one of the two major political parties and is funded and weaponized from time to time to create political influence in the area. In these communities, it is commonplace for an area don, a 90 octane criminal, to send for any young woman or girl he desires from the community by sending a message to her family. It is not what is known in Jamaica as Holdong and Tech, which is violent rape in its most primitive form, but it is still rape with power and influence exerted on a psychological level rather than through physical violence. He observes that in this scenario, Jamaican society on a whole still applaud and celebrate these dons, which is shown throughout the history of dancehall music. Dons, aka 90 octane criminals, being celebrated in popular songs. However, if the 87 bad man commits a rape, the social attitudes differ and this man should have his head decapitated. There is no mercy shown to the 87 octane for his crime and society is rightfully ruthless with him. But then Sir P explains that if a 90 octane bad man commits the same crime because he has money, clout, fame, respect and influence to the point of many people's favourite artists singing about him, he receives a different response to what is essentially the same crime. Rape. Dudus, Bulby, Zeeks, Willie Haggard and Tesha Miller are some of the Don names that are provided to hammer his points home. I want to add a side note that Sir P providing such an example and even in other videos explaining that this rape by Dons happens with young boys also who aren't sent for through the families but are sexually assaulted behind closed doors is another reason why I have the respect for Sir P that I do. Pure, unadulterated cultivated and unapologetic truth which in this day and age is rare in the media. He explains that there is difference in the intelligence between the 87 octane bad man and the 90 octane bad man, as the 87 is motivated by violence, whereas the 90 is motivated by money, making them more long lasting and strategic in their approach. The 90 octane bad man sees the police as an ally as opposed to a foe and makes sure the police are taken care of financially. However, the 90 octane bad man, while being free from being hunted by the police like the 87 octane bad man, is delusional as he often thinks he is in charge of his own criminal destiny without intervention when the truth is the second he makes a misstep with any political affiliates he will be swiftly removed from any previous rank he was part of and assassinated as long as the 90 octane bad man remains within the respectful boundaries created by politicians, he will be left to commit his crimes and even supported and commissioned at times. But if he offends or disrespects a politician too much, he will be done. Before I move on, I have to add that Sir P also speaks often throughout his many videos about the love that the 87 octane and 90 octane criminals have for Obia, aka the science. This is an underground Jamaican spiritual practice where supernatural energies are used for spiritual protection, as well as to afflict ill and exert influence on others. The 87 and 
90 octane criminals engage in Obia in a bid to enhance their chances of success in crime. Introducing the 116 octane criminal. In the second episode of Jamaica Has Three Types of Criminals, Sir P introduces the third and ultimate octane criminal in Jamaica. The 116 octane criminal. This is an octane most of the population wouldn't have heard of as they are so rare. Most people don't know they even exist. Sir P details how many people think the 90 octane is the biggest criminal in Jamaica. But in fact, the 116 octane criminal is Jamaica's supreme criminal. The 116 octane criminal generally looks different to the majority of the Jamaican population. There are only a few exceptions. He is not of African descent and is of a different race to the majority of Jamaicans. According to Sir P, his traits include being well-spoken, well-educated, slow to anger, and he is considered by those around him to be a nice man. The 116 is wealthy, unlike the lesser 90 octane, who is rich. He makes major donations to one or both of the political parties in Jamaica. He is called upon whenever donations are needed by these political parties, and in return, no laws will be passed that may threaten the interest of this 116 octane. Consequently, unlike the lower numbers, he'll never see a day in jail. He is more of a conservative dress and doesn't wear the bright bling usually associated with criminals in Jamaica. Serpy explains that unlike the mainstream fashion brands that are easily identifiable, the 116 Octane wears expensive luxury brands that aren't easily identified in Jamaica and seem understated and modest to most Jamaicans. Yet, the cost of even a simple watch could purchase a large house house and a car in Jamaica. He is literally hiding in plain sight. According to Sir P, the 116 usually has a bogus rags to riches story. Sir P explains that this story follows the 116's family's immigration to Jamaica in the 1950s or 60s when they were allegedly super poor. The 116 claims his work ethic and tenacity led to his success. The early 116s, who are in their 50s and 60s now, would usually wash money obtained from drug trafficking clean and created many of the major corporations in Jamaica that we see today. Often, the money of the 116 octane criminal is washed so meticulously that even his own wife and children won't know he used to be a criminal, a narco trafficker, sending planes filled with drugs to nearby islands with US dollars. People tend to think the 116 is just a hard worker and a high achiever. People in his corporate world aspire to be like him and he's often seen as a role model when behind the scenes he has developed his wealth with the high level sophisticated local drug trafficking, global cartel, stock market insider trading, foreign exchange fraud and wire fraud. Crimes that are unknown and not easy to understand by the average is Jamaican. The 116 does not do the dirty work and are not only crispy clean in image. Sir P explains that they are immune to crime and so are their children. No one in their family is getting hurt and they will never be confronted by the biggest 90 octanes in Jamaica. He states that this is why so many extremely wealthy people live in Jamaica and their lives are not affected by the ongoing crimes on the island. The lower ranking criminal knows not to test a 116 octane as he will meet immediate death, no questions asked. 
Sir P elaborates further about the fact that Jamaica gives 116 octane criminals instant respect and no need to prove themselves. Jamaicans respect non-African races more than their own, so his foreign ethnicity and surname opens doors for him that are closed on the majority of Jamaicans for the same reason. The children of the 116 criminal also get this instant respect. Their criminal fathers have a plan of longevity to ensure their children can continue this legacy and level of wealth after their own deaths generational wealth organized similar to institution. Unlike the 90 and 87, he is never accosted by the police because in the psyche of the Jamaican police, as Sir P so aptly explains, the race of the 116 octane says he deserves his wealth, his flashy car, etc. And so this criminal is treated exclusively differently to the average Jamaican who is of African descent. According to Sir P, the main factors that affect how Jamaican criminals are treated are 1. The amount of money they have 2. How society values them 3. The inherent prejudices that Jamaican culture has actually means that the bigger the criminal, the more respect society has for him. So there, you have the three types of criminal in Jamaica. Before I end this video, I am going to add one last criminal that Sir P has classified in his video, Cursing Oil Women, Jamaica's missing piece of the crime puzzle. This perfectly completes his list and highlights another intangible but often deadly criminal within the chain. So what is a cursing oil woman, you might ask? Coming back to the theme of octane fuel and petrol, kerosene oil is a gas that is traditionally used in Jamaica to light a kerosene oil lamp or stove before and during the growing use of electricity. They are often used during power cuts and I remember my grandmother's own kerosene oil lamps being around the home when I was a child. According to Sir P, the kerosene oil is the female criminal who plays the role of the facilitator and enabler in Jamaica. She has no specific physical characteristics. She comes from all walks of life, all levels of education and income. Externally, she can definitely appear to be a good girl, unlike the ghetto girl that people stereotypically associate with being kerosene oils. The truth is, kerosene oils work with whoever is close to them in the environment or who needs them. For example, Sir P explains that a high-level executive female may work with the 116 octane. A bank teller might end up with a 90 octane and a local girl with an 87 octane. Sir P also explores how these women usually have dysfunctional relationships with their fathers and seek the missing dominance in the arms of an assertive and rough male. He says that she craves the protection of her father that usually wasn't provided to her and this is why she is drawn to this type of man. When dealing with these criminals, especially 87 octanes, this kerosene oil will get beaten a lot and she will get so used to it, she will not be interested in the nice and courteous men who don't abuse women. The main role she plays is the concealing and transportation of weapons as she isn't a likely suspect. She cleans his bloodstained clothes after murders and dresses the wounds that cannot be treated in legal facilities due to police warrants. Depending on her charm, she can flirt her way out of any problems with police, especially as Jamaican police have a reputation for being overly sexual and woman hungry. She can assist in setting up other criminals for assassination by feigning interest in them. She's also found on TV crying and protesting
protesting when her criminal man is arrested or killed and she will kill if necessary. The kerosene oil criminal is a pivotal member of each gang and crime network across Jamaica and she is found in all walks of life. Hence, she is the missing piece of the Jamaican crime puzzle. Sir P states that the kerosene oil knows her gender works in her favor as due to gender bias. It doesn't look good for women to be pursued by the law in the same seriousness as the male obtains. She is a deadly weapon in Jamaican crime and to overlook this can be fatal. So there you have it, the 87, 90, 160 octanes and the kerosene oils work together to create the key structure of crime in Jamaica as we know it. As there are exceptions to most rules, occasionally a woman works as an 87 or 90, but this is not seen as commonly. Now I have shared Sir P's system. I urge you again to check out all of his gloriously hard hitting and landscape shifting content Content. And thank you for staying with me to the end of the video. I will be using these key terms in my future videos, so it's good to know that you will understand what I'm talking about. Please be sure to check out my Gardna Sleep Line as 50% of profits goes to women who have survived abuse in Jamaica who have been revealed to me through my expose. The next documentary will be the long-awaited full expose on Ramon Kalai and Mark Linshu. Hit the bell to make sure you're notified when the next video drops and please share your views about this system below. See how you can relate that structure to the country that you you might live in if you're not currently living in Jamaica and I look forward to hearing what you think about this information. Again, big up to Serpy, big up to Podatrix Watch and the PIA movement, big up to the Belly Fam and thanks for tuning in. As the old timers would say, what good?